Kensington Gardens, which is directly ahead of us at the top of the street in front of us. Uh, that's where we're sort, of, we're sort of heading up towards Kensington Gardens right now. Um, the centre of London, the city, the square mile, is slightly different to the other 32 boroughs in that it's uh, um, the original one square mile of London. The Romans created it 2,000 years ago when the Romans arrived here and they created a trading city on the banks of the River Thames. And that one square mile is still um, separate from the rest of London to this very day. And we call it the city with a capital C. St Paul's Cathedral lies right in the centre of it and mostly around it are financial institutions like banks and insurance companies etc. So it's in the heart of the financial district. So that uh, arch, a bronze statue seated there and it's gilded as you can see, so that's why it shines. The gilded statue of Albert's lovely, isn't it? It's real Victorian, uh, a real Victorian extravaganza, isn't it, that one? So there we are, to remember Queen Victoria's beloved husband. Thank you, everybody, you ready to move on. Um, where the, the monument stands, we call it the Albert Memorial, where the memorial stands, was where the original expo stood. It was the Crystal Palace, and the Crystal Palace was built there, glass and steel, um, to show off Victorian Enterprise in 1851 and the man who organised the Great Exhibition of 1851 was Prince Albert and so when he died 10 years later in 1861 they placed his memorial on the site of this Great Exhibition of 1851 which was his idea and uh, as I say he, uh, he died 10 years later very young actually he was only 42 when he died he died at Tyford uh, to Windsor Castle so Queen Victoria ended up being a widow for 40 years after his death Mandarin Oriental Hotel on the left, and uh, various stores around here. We'll see some of them on the way back as we drive back through Knightsbridge back towards the hotel later. We call this area Knightsbridge, Kensington, Chelsea, these interconnecting areas here, the playground of the super rich. Do the uh, underpass. Yeah, what a Ferrari. There's two to choose from there one silver grey, one red. same building where it opened in 1971, just there by the rock shop here at the corner of Piccadilly. So, uh, 1971, the very first one. So, Piccadilly takes us right up into the heart of the West End. We've got Green Park on our right. That's one of the smaller London parks. And Green Park, as you will see as we drive, See where he's buried when we get to St Paul's Cathedral because Nelson has a beautiful tomb in the crypt of St Paul's. I'll show you that when we get up there. So there we are, base of the column. Looking up to the top if you can. And he is on the top. Three times life size, so it's a pretty big statue. The lions are great. People sit on their backs to have their photographs taken. You can 
you can't get on them easily, you have to scramble up, but uh, it's, all, it's worth it. Look over to your left as we come round, can you see the National Gallery with a little grey dome in the middle, and the red banners hanging between the columns, that's the National Gallery. If you want to see some famous paintings like the Sunflowers by Van Gogh, then go in there and see that. Can you see that piece of sculpture on the far side, directly across to the left? It's like a fist with a thumb. Yeah, it's called Really Good, and it's uh, the fourth plinth. There are four plinths, one on each corner, and that one on the top left of the corner, the fourth plinth, always has a piece of, a piece of art on it. Every 18 months they change it, every 18 months, and it's really good at the moment. So it's like a thumbs up, but people, some people have said it doesn't look like a thumbs up. On the left, George Washington statue. Can you see the come on the gloom on the left? Look, there he is. It's Kane. And uh, George Washington famously said that he never wanted to walk on English soil. So we thought, well, suit yourself. And <laughs> when, the, when the statue arrived in the 1920s, and that's when that statue was brought here, it was accompanied by a large. there since 1999 so 18 years it's been you like good sing song have a look on your left there's a novello theater just on the corner with mamma mia look up the street to the left there's 42nd street just at the top there at the theater all Drury Lane. here on the left the waldorf hotel so if you like a, a traditional tea dance they still have them every sunday afternoon in their bowl traditional english tea dances in the waldorf ballroom and this semi-circle a street it's called the old bridge and it brings us up between two more of our big universities we saw imperial college back there which on the stone you see all the damage is scarring on the stone that was damage from the second world war end of the church has a statue there's dr johnson on the right dr johnson's statue he's got a little dictionary in his hand and he was the man who published the world's first English dictionary here in Fleet Street in 1755. 44,000 words contained in Samuel Johnson's first dictionary. So the statue stands there at the back of St. Clement Danes, the Royal Air Force Church. Little tea shop on the right. Can you see Twinings just across the crossing on the front right? Chinaman? Two Chinamen actually in a golden line that was established in the early 1700s and when it opens each day people go in there but it's very narrow and long. Tea tasting on the right. This is the High Court on the left, very grand building. The Law Courts, opened by Queen Victoria in 1882, and reflects the majesty of the law. Look how grand it is on the left, the Law Courts. Civil Courts of the Court of Appeal. Now, where the old city gate used to stand into the city of London was here, and in the middle of the road, nowadays, is a column. Explosives and incendiary bombs back in the 19, for, between 1940 and 1941, and uh, the whole area was so badly damaged that they didn't rebuild everything. So here on the front left, you can see the tower with the lead steeple of St Augustine's Church, and that was. But the church is gone, and uh, here you can see the modern buildings just to the left of the church, now, and that's the cathedral school building. So that's where the boys who sing at the choir go to school, there are 26 of them at any one time. And the Leaning on his stick, looking across the road to the left, and he's looking over towards the House of Commons. Well, of course, um, he was an MP for many, many years, a member of the House of Commons, the lower house. The United Kingdom Parliament buildings are open every day for visitors this, this week because the politicians are on their conference recess means that Parliament is open for visitors every day but Sunday this week. So if you want to go inside and have a tour around, ideal opportunity this week. So there's Churchill on the right, Big Ben on the left, there's the scaffolding of the tower. We're going to go all the way around and have a look. But uh, the Parliament buildings stretch from the top tower with Big Ben, that's called the Elizabeth Tower, all the way down to the tall tower in the distance which is called the Victoria Tower. That's the taller of the two, right at the far end of the building on the front. 
so that's the fall of Parliament, the United Kingdom Parliament village, which is a, a Victorian village actually, between 1840 and 1852. It's 1066, our present king crowned there, 64 years ago in 1953. There we are, there's the North Door. You can see people waiting to go in. It was closed yesterday. Um, that's why I guess there's more people wanting to go in it today. And uh, there you can see the beautiful old medieval church, Westminster Abbey. Royal weddings and coronations. Past the statue of Abraham Lincoln. There he is on the left, look, standing in front of his chair. We've got lots of statues around the square of various champions of democracy. That's the idea of these statues. Churchill, Lincoln, back in his box look and the other one is out on the street so you'll see one the far one much more clearly than the nearer one and they're there for an hour each time so every hour the two horses and riders go back into the stables and two come out to replace them and that's between 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon so the horse guards are on duty for that period of the day 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. changed every hour on the hour. The lifeguards. See one in the middle without his horse. And just after Canada House, under the tree in front of you, a statue of King George III on his horse. He was America's last king, by the way, King George III. If you look to your right, there he is on his plinth. He was Queen Victoria's grandfather. He was King of England almost as long as she was Queen. He was King of England from 1760 to 1820 when he died. So that's uh, during the time of America. Yeah.
scenario What I am to you Is not you to me